What's up, everybody? Welcome into The Rundown. I am Kendall Smith alongside of Colin Taylor. We conned him into being on camera today. And Colin, tell everybody how tall you are, because if you can't tell right off of the bat, I'm 5'2". He, he probably one of the smallest person on our team, but play like the biggest, talk like the biggest. You will never know he 5'2". And I like to tell people I'm 6'3", but I'm really 6'2". I just had a physical the other week, so I'm 6'2". So an entire foot taller than me. So just ignore the height difference right now. We're just going to recap South Carolina's victory over East Carolina, a 20-17 to win for the Gamecocks. And Colin, tell me, what did you learn about this team? Obviously a lot of big mistakes, but to be able to come back and get the victory, what'd you think? Yeah, um, it was, they escaped with a win. Um, to get the bowl eligibility, six wins, they needed to win this game this is one of the ones that you chalked up as a win and uh they never gave up it would have been very easy when they went down two scores late in the second half to really or late in the second quarter to really give up but they didn't uh they found a way especially through the defensive side of the ball to really spark them and took advantage of some mistakes from east carolina and played lights out defense so you, you learned that this team never gives up and they have enough playmakers to really do some things offensively at times and that defense really steep is good. You talk about the mistakes. Let's talk about the penalties for yes. South Carolina. Obviously not the best aspect of their game today. If you're Shane Beamer, is that the first point of emphasis when you head into practice next week? Yeah, it's got to be. Um, the penalties and the offensive line play are something that probably get addressed. It, and it's not, penalties sometimes you can stomach if it's effort penalties, but this is just stupid stuff like unsportsmanlike conducts, uh, jawing, holding. The things that really impact the game and for South Carolina your margin for error in some of these games once you get into SEC play is so small you can't have penalties derailing drives penalties derailing big moments or momentum swings the game so <laughs> you got number two George on the road next week and those penalties better be cleaned up if you if you want to stop and, and upset George again. Let's talk about some bright spots from tonight's game, especially some bright players from yep. tonight's game. Josh Van, I want to talk about him first. He had 116 receiving yards on five receptions tonight. What did you think of him? It's fantastic. Josh is a guy that obviously has been through his fair share of struggles since he arrived on campus, uh, but has really come into his own this offseason, had met with great reviews. So you're happy for a guy to see him uh, flourish the way he did on Saturday and you feel good, and, and South Carolina's offense needs a vertical passing threat. He's emerged at least in the first two games as uh, someone that can do that. So you hope that that continues through SEC play, but you're happy for him. Um, and I think if he can continue to do that and they scheme up plays for him, um, South Carolina's offense can get a little bit more explosive and, and stretch the field vertically to open up those one And someone who was spoken of very highly during the preseason was Juju McDowell. We got to see him shine tonight as well. 71 yards on 11 carries. He's in a really deep position. Obviously, you talked about Kevin Harris. You talked about Marshawn Lloyd. Tonight, it was Juju's wow. night to shine. So your analysis on him. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that speaks to his talent and his ability and his just special innate nature to make plays that He's on that final drive, the game-winning drive, you know, instead of Kevin Harris, instead of Marshawn Lloyd, instead of Zaquandre White, you're putting a freshman out there. and um, He really made a lot of people miss. I think he had 45 of the 54 yards on that game-winning drive. So he's a special player and someone that I think we're going to see a lot more of as South Carolina continues the season. And not to mention the 63-yard kickoff return. Uh, right after ECU took the lead, he rattles off a big 63-yard kickoff return uh, to set up the game tying field goal and then has 45 of the 54 yards uh, to set up the game winning field goal. So, I mean, they don't win this game today without Juju McDowell. Win the winnable games. That should be the mindset going yes. forward for South Carolina. Obviously, next week, a very tough test against the number two Georgia Bulldogs in Athens, Georgia. We'll be there, and we've got a lot more coming for you on this game from this afternoon at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. Colin, thanks for doing this. You did good. You, you were nervous. I feel, like I, on camera. I feel like I nailed it. I you feel like we did nailed it. it. I see a future in broadcast <laughs> for you. But thank you, everybody, for watching. At home, we've got more coming. I'm Kendall Smith alongside of Colin. Davis.